So we have a new comment as well. That's exclamation mark basilisk discord. In that discord, you guys will be able to find several. You guys will be able to find Raynor and Trigger. And if you really care about Cassus, Biomorph and Roddy will be around there too. And uh, the idea is in the future that we get a lot of the players to join the Basilisk Discord as well. And then we can give them certain roles and they can let us know when they are available to play in the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. And that should make the entire process of setting up Friday nights a little bit easier. Right now, I'm doing it the old-fashioned way, where basically on a Monday or a Tuesday, I am just DMing a whole bunch of pro gamers and see who is available and who wants to play. The idea is for everybody to kind of be united in the Basilisk Discord and make it a very smooth pro uh, process where they can let me know when they are available and whatnot. <laughs> By the way, Basilisk is kind of OP right now, right? I think Basilisk already was OP. I mean, Serral, Roddy, Trigger, that was one hell of a team. Having Reyna join us as well definitely makes us, you know, a bit more versatile across the board, but I don't think that he can really knock any of us three out of the main starting lineup, to be completely honest. But, you know, it it's nice to have a good backup. I believe every good team needs a strong bench. And it's very nice that we have a strong bench warmer in the name of Rainer. <laughs> I feel like Rainer does not know where I am in or where I'm at. Because I am in the Discord. I don't have the privilege, the password. All right. We'll do it the old-fashioned way then. I tried. Rainer failed. What a guy. <laughs> He's now asking why I'm trying to be fancy. I'm trying to be fancy Warriors because the they night. want me Assemble. to be fancy. Hello? Hello, hello. Of course, I can't hear anything. Okay, I can hear you. You're a little bit loud. I'm going to adjust the vo uh, volume. Is Team Roddy no more? Team Roddy is absolutely still a thing. And we are about to cast somebody of Team Roddy. Hmm? Hello, Kevin. Can you hear me? Yes, but you went from very loud to ultra quiet. Uh, that sucks. Yes. And I also don't see you. I know, I know. That's... that's. So I will put you back to 100. And we'll find Hello? the sweet yeah, spot. Yeah. yeah, you tell me the sweet spot. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I can change too much about that. But the yeah. webcam... Webcam is coming. Oh. Oh, okay. Now can let's. See me? I can see you, and now I am going to see. Hey, and they can see you as well. But okay, you are not the quite the correct size. How do I get you a different size? Hmm. Give me one second. I think that's because right. of your camera. Uh, yeah, I just stole it from my brother. I know you are very stretched out, but it works for me. White. <laughs> Rainer, <laughs> welcome, matey. Let's have Kevin. Unbelievable. Teammates again. Thank you so much for making the bench of Basilisk a little stronger for the upcoming <laughs> WPL. I'm ready to get carried over here. My boys Trigger and Rotti got me, I'm pretty sure. Absolutely, mate. Anyone, I don't even have to move a finger. We are going to spam some Phoenixes and Zealots for you, and you can just be our number one cheerleader. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for that. All right, everybody in the chat, you guys can let me know about the volume. I right now have rain at 110%. Uh, if this is good, then I think we are pretty much good to go to hop into our second best of five. If this is not good, Rainer can just uh, continue chitty chatting. Before we hop into the series, obviously, mate, congratulations. I've been aware of it for a while. You've been aware of it for a while. But how does it feel that now the world knows that you're officially a member of Basilisk? I don't know. It feels amazing. I'm re really, really excited. Uh, I don't know. I just can't wait. Being teammates with Serral is very exciting as well. I don't know if it's... Uh, I, I'm going to make so much fun of him. It's going to be really exciting. I, I, yeah, I just can't wait. I don't know. I can't find better words. I'm very hyped. All right. And you're wearing the hoodie as well, I see. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, of course. Of course. Wrapping right. the hoodie. I put you at 120, but people say you're still a tiny bit quiet. So I'm going to try 130. And then I think yeah, we I'm should... I'm sorry be... about the setup. No, no, no. I not just, a... uh, had to go back to Italy real quick. So now I'm using my dad's PC with my brother's stuff. It's a bit scuffed, but I'm trying my best. I hope you didn't kick your brother off his main setup because he needs to perform, mate. No, no, I just stole his headsets and his webcam. He doesn't really need that. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Now, He's now he knows I'm watching and I'm criticizing because I'm the caster. So he better actually, you know, step up. I, I think can also slap him. 
You have to be nice, by the way, today, Rainer. You're now officially representing Basilisk on our Basilisk broadcast, so you have to be a little nice to the baby, bro. True, true. I cannot misbehave. Gonna be nice. All right. I see you're in the game. I'm in the game. It's exactly 7 p.m., guys. That's normally when we are supposed to start our second best of five, so I think we should just go ahead and send it. You know, it's extra cool, by the way, because Jumi is currently in the UK. He's attending Epigland, so he probably has a lot of uh, local support. So you really need to do the proper big brother job now and cheer on for the little bro from the same household i mean well, you know what they say they say quality over quantity kev my brother has me cheering for him over 100 british lads i would take myself anything <laughs> all right game <laughs> one is going to be Gresbon. i'm very excited for this best of five because these are two youngsters of the european scene that are near and dear to my heart and I'm obviously excited to have you with me. Let's go ahead and enjoy our second best of five of the 18th edition already of the Basilisk Big Brain Belts. In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the man playing these games from Kettering. Yes, that is actually a place. Kettering, UK, representing K10. Epic Land goes wild after the pause for, for Jumi. Can't believe they just paused. No, this cool. has to be intended, no? He knows we're doing the intro introduction. <laughs> I don't know, man. Jumi is also a caster. He's a tournament organizer. This youngster does it all. I don't yeah. think he would mess with us on purpose. I don't know. Kids these days are kind of wild, Kevin. All right. So while we are waiting for these nerds to officially be ready, we can uh, once more go back to our original conversation. When did the ball start rolling between you and Basilisk? What's the story? I'm sure some people were very confused and surprised when Cyril joined. Now it's not just Cyril, it's Cyril and Rainer. Talk to us a little bit about how did the process go from you obviously being part of Kaizy Gaming, leaving Kaizy and joining Basilisk. Uh, so basically me and Basilisk, was Basilisk, we started talking, I think it was Home Story Cup, when they, when they came in with a bang and they, they up the prize pool of the tournament mm -hmm. and everything. And that's when we started talking. I was very interested in who they were and what they were doing. And they were interested in myself as well. So, yeah, we just kind of... I felt like we had good... Uh, oh, what happened? Um, it seems that Ford Jumi needs to restart his computer quickly, or at least StarCraft 2, because he had no sound and he couldn't fix it. So we're just going to go ahead and rehost the game. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> no, yeah, we, we, we were talking. Uh, I felt like we had good you know synergy because they were asking me uh, a lot of smart questions and i i knew that they were and you had no answer for any of them right <laughs> yeah of course man. it took me off guard i was like ah these guys are too smart <laughs> no but uh, for real they, they were super nice and they were they impressed me a lot because they knew every single result i was like even in the smaller tournaments i would call them sometimes and they were like ah we saw you did this and this in the small tournament i was like damn they actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that was very impressive by them. Is and, that feeling uh, important to you as a player? Like some people will see you as this kid that doesn't really care about anything and is just out for personal success and wants to dominate every single tournament. But it is important to you that people are watching and that they care about every single thing you do in StarCraft 2? Yeah, of course, it's very important, especially like for my team and my family and my friends. It's, it's, it's very nice to have the feeling that they're watching and especially if I'm doing well, you know, they're proud of me and everything. So yeah, it's, it's a very nice feeling and I, I quite like it personally. That's awesome. Who could have thought, guys, that deep down inside there is a sweet, sensitive boy that cares about people being invested in his journey. All right, go ahead and give me one hell of an intro of the baby bro then. Okay, in the top left, we have the second, no, third best player in Italy. It is my brother. He's going to take it home 3-0, Baby Marine. Woo! Cannot believe that you didn't mention his team. Team Rotti. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, I know the owner. That guy is a bit of a douche. So I don't like <laughs> Seems like we're going to kick things off, guys, with a proxy barracks here in our very first game. Obviously, these two are familiar with each other. They have played countless of not just tournaments, but ladder games against one another as well. I would say overall for Jumi is, of course, the slightly stronger player. He's a bit more accomplished. He has made it into WCS Premier League or the DreamHack Masters Europe quite a few times. Baby Marine has not gotten that far yet. But I always feel the TVP of your little bro is the one matchup where he can kind of punch above his weight a little. You think so? TVP? Yes. Okay, that's interesting because I see him lose a lot against uh, random Protoss players as well. 
So it feels like he can maybe punch above his league, but also lose, uh, I guess, worse players in this match. Yeah. I mean, some and of these uh, random Protoss players are pretty good, though. Yeah, no, but like legit random Protoss players. Man. Like, how random are we talking? Like 5k. No. Yes, I've seen him lose to 5k's. That's maybe because you stress him out. No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. I'm, yeah, I don't stress people out. All right, I have a couple of ask extra questions for you. But first, we need to talk about these openings because this is a pretty wild start. Jumi has scouted. He knows that the barracks is not at home. Now he also knows the factory is not at home. And he has decided to build a pylon on top of the ramp. Sees at least one marine. And he's now looking for oh these uh, barracks and... Well, potentially barracks, but at least the barracks and the factory that is currently being proxied. What is Baby Marine up to here in game one on Grass One? Well, it's just, it looks like it's a proxy. I don't know, it could be mines. I think it's probably mines, honestly. Uh, mines with the uh, armory, yeah. He's gonna make the armory. But he has to wall off, man. What is he doing? Because this pylon is pointless if you make a depot. But if you just chill ah. there with the Marine. Ah! <laughs> This Zealot right now, guys, is a problem. It's a very, very big problem. Baby Marine wants to be focused on dealing damage on the other side of the map with these mines, and it is indeed going to be armories of permanently cloaked mines. He was going to fly the barracks at home, but this is an absolute disaster start. As right now, the floodgates are open. We've got a Zealot and an Adapt against SCVs only. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really get any worse than this, does it? Nah, I don't know. I mean, these mines have to kill like 50 probes and there's not even 50 probes on the map. I don't know, I feel like if you see a pylon, it means the guy is probably gonna make a zealot and like, he just wall off against that. Imagine if there's a uh, depot there, then you can make a bunker and this game is like to be played, you know, then now the game is kind of over. Yep, and Baby Marine is gonna try to make something out of it by uh, just slowly but steady cleaning up these adapts in the zealot for Jumi, obviously off to the absolute best possible start. The mines are gonna head to the main base of Jumi, and the robo is a little bit late, but yeah, hyping this up when there are 12 SCVs chasing a single adept. These Widow Mines indeed need to basically kill every single probe to make this a game. There is another adept running to the other side of the map. Jumi not paying attention. That's minus 15 probes though. Okay, okay that's a good start. I mean, we don't have anything to clear, clean the main base. Nope, now Jumi's even warping in adepts in the main base. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, man, imagine if there's a, a depot there instead of just a marine shooting at the pylon. That, yeah, that's a completely different game right there. Yeah, we'll have a conversation about this. The one with a mine that didn't fire yet is now going to run into the natural. Is there anything that we could ever make? Hey, it was 15 in the end, by the way. 10 plus 5. God, you're always flexing, aren't you? <laughs> We have one mine at home as well, two marines in the final SCVs against the three adapts. I really love how Jumi just said, mate, I don't care about your widow mine drops. You've got literally nothing at home, and if you've got nothing at home, well, one adept and a zealot are a problem, but if I then keep on warping in adepts in the other side of the map, that becomes an even bigger problem. It this literally has no minerals to make an SCV. Well, we can... Uh... That's sad. He does have one SCV, where is... Ah, he's just chilling at the factory. Is there a world where the Widow Mines blow up the Stalkers? <laughs> no. Oh, there is, mate. It's my world. <laughs> yeah, it's your world. Yeah, yeah. Maybe with an Oracle. <laughs> Good shot. Maybe Doom is world as well. <laughs> hey, the Mines in the main. Can we do something out of this game, Kev? Or are we doing... If Bay Marine wins this, it's officially the greatest comeback in StarCraft 2 history. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Jumi is down to <laughs> 10 workers. <laughs> but yeah, Jumi's he's... doing his best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, three yeah. Marines. <laughs> three Marines, nothing but mines. <laughs> no way. Raynor, what is happening? There's obviously a couple of Zealots messing up every single SCV on the other side of the map. Okay, these two stalkers, uh, I think that's a bit too much to deal with. Hey, All right. Imagine, uh, three Marines, no? They don't be three stalkers. Two stalkers, if I could correctly. Yeah, if there was no shield battery, that would actually be kind of uh, intimidating because two medevacs and three marines would have a realistic chance of making life very, very hard on two stalkers. And the zealots would be terrible against all the widow mines, right? You can't really micro zealots against widow mines. For <laughs> literally the worst start ever, Baby Marine kind of made something <laughs> out of that game. I just liked how Jumi stopped caring about this game. He was like, ah, oh, yeah, three mines in my mineral line. Let him blow up all my probes. No big deal. 
Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, you can't blame him when he had three adapts, one shotting every single SCV. But yeah, at, at, <laughs> at one point, you're like, okay, now it's getting bad. Now I want it to stop. And then there are two more mines that go up. Yay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I think for like 0.3 seconds, there was a little bit of fear in the heart of Jumi there. But yeah, I also believed for a tiny second, maybe. If one of the stalkers would have died to a widow mine, or imagine if you have one of these widow mine shots that kills a gateway unit and the observer above it, like we've all been Oof. there. Oh, yeah, 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 that would be real good. I don't know. I mean, I see a, a world where Jumi loses that game, right. even at the very end, perhaps, maybe. I don't know. This does mean that our German Protoss is playing these games live from Epiglen in Catherine, the UK. Takes the 1-0 lead. Before we hop into game two, I've got a question for you, mate, about the big brain bouts today. What do you think of our main event? That's a banger, isn't it? Oh, Pig against uh, Benny, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be exciting. I can't wait. I actually That's think it's awesome. one of the best main events we've ever had in 18 weeks. Who do you think is going to take it? Can we say it? Yeah, no, I can absolutely say who I think is going to take it. It's funny because yesterday, a lot of people in my chat were like, oh, that's not going to be close. Big wins. And today, a lot of people say, that's not going to be close. The Muslim wins. Um, I think if Ben is able to play as well as he did against Iba, I think then he wins. But I, I don't know if he can ben. play that well again. I don't know. Ben is always a killer, man. He's got his uh, proxy builds. In TVP, he always does the two base. Like 1-1 uh, into everything. I don't know, Ben is kind of scary when uh, when he practices. I know he's not practicing, but you know, the skill, he still has it. I, I was surprised by how eager he was to play, though. Like, I asked him, I was like, hey, Ben, I have this idea. I want Pick to play on Friday. And at first, I thought about playing myself, but I was like, I can't really get that going because I would need two setups for it. So uh, yeah. if you want to play, I was like, you do me a massive solid. But I assumed that Ben wouldn't want to play unless he has been playing a lot of StarCraft in the build-up. And all he said was like, Kev, you know me, I'm a gamer, I'm in. I was like, oh! <laughs> so I think That's it's, it. yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna be a great best of five. Let's hope that game two between these two is going to be a little longer than that first game, even though it was fun. In the top yeah, left side. A, yeah? Sorry, I'll, I'll just say this one sec. There's a new terror on the ladder that I've never seen before. I think there's a slight chance Benny picked up the mouse again and stopped playing with the elephants. Well, I saw the moment that I contacted him on Tuesday, Literally two hours later, I saw him online on Battle.net. Okay, okay. Uh, so it's probably not him then. I don't remember the name of the guy, but I played this guy. He's like 6, 6k, 5'9". Uh, it's probably not Ben. No, I think Ben is probably playing under the Muslim. All right, quick intros. Babylon, game two. This time around, the barracks has been built at home. In the top left side, he needs your love and support. He's down 0-1, our Italian Terran player from Team Roddy. This is Baby Marine. You want me to do Jumi? Absolutely, mate. Okay, in the bottom right, we have the German Protoss player playing from the UK. It's Jumi. How was that? That's perfect, matey. So while we take a look at the Double Reaper Hellion opening coming out of Baby Marine, I'm sure that some people are wondering, how has life been for you after I am Katowice? It was, of course, not the result that you were looking for. You spent a few days in the Netherlands and now you're back in Italy, right? So how did the yeah. week of Rainer look? Uh, so basically I came back and uh, I got the apartment the day after. Mm -hmm. So I got my own apartment. I was staying at Harstam's place for uh, the people that don't know. So I was staying at his place before Katowice. Then I got my own apartment the day after I came back. So I got the keys and started transferring everything to the new apartment. Spent some time at Ikea. Uh, my girlfriend actually visited me for uh, two days, so we went to Amsterdam. Oh, really? Yeah, not too much. Yeah, you went yeah, to Amsterdam? Came... You didn't go yeah, to Rotterdam? We no. Mate. Why would I go to Rotterdam? No, Unbelievable. We went, to we went to the zoo. Unbelievable. We have a way better zoo. What do you mean you went to the zoo yeah. in Amsterdam? To be honest, I read that after I went to Amsterdam. I was like, ah, oh, the uh, Rotterdam Zoo is the best one in the Netherlands. So yes. <laughs> if I tell Kevin about it, he's never going to let it slide. So I didn't want to tell you at first, but it feels bad not telling you now. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You go to Amsterdam, you visit the zoo. That zoo is a budget zoo compared to the zoo. No, in come Rotterdam. on. It was actually pretty good, though. The zoo. Yeah, imagine how good the zoo in Rotterdam would be if you think that yeah, one was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Okay, I'll give it to you. We can go. <laughs> Me, you, and Vicky. Go. <laughs> sure, mate. Back. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll give you the nice tour. I'll bring Jax as well. He loves the oh. zoo in Rotterdam. 
Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure he does. How many times do you visit it? Me? No, I, no, no, Jack. Oh, Jack's actually has gone a lot. He's probably gone like five or six times already. My mom takes him really? like every <laughs> second week. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit about this game because Bay Marine went for his uh, Reaper, Reaper, Heli, and Aggression. He got four props. That's perfectly fine. Jumi is playing Phoenixes into Robo, into all the gases. But it seems that Bay Marine's got a very quick attack planned as a follow-up. Where he will not have any starport units, but he will have a lot of firepower with the Marines. And he will have tanks to zone away the Colossus. I like this. On paper, I really like it for Baby Marine. Yeah, yeah me too. So basically the build that he opened up with, I think it's the Oliveira. What Oliveira was playing in TVP because I was studying a few of his replays. Mm -hmm. He wanted to learn how to play Terran and he was kind of spamming this build. And it's quite good against Stargate. Uh, but uh, this is a different follow-up because he skipped the starport, so he's looking for a combat shield and steam timing without medivacs. Just three tanks and pure, pure aim of power. I think uh, this is really good against what uh, Jumi is doing. Honestly. Yeah, but Baby Marine doesn't have to end the game if Jumi is sitting on two bases, right? You can just go for a bit of a contain. You can just have your tanks in a beautiful concave, siege them up, and force Jumi to attack into you if he ever wants to break out. And meanwhile, just go double starport even at home to eventually get a lot of Vikings out. Uh, I don't think we need to win. Obviously, we do want to cancel the third base. And if yeah, Jumi wants yeah. to fight it, yeah, then we kind of need to win. But if Jumi cancels the third base, I think Baby Marine can just go for some sort of a contain. Uh, so I, I think I think he doesn't have to win, but I don't see how Jumi can answer to this because he has two gateways, one Colossus on the way, it's not even done. Uh, the upgrade for the Colossus is it's not even halfway done. So he's gonna have like one Colossus, four Adepts and some Phoenixes. I don't know if he can answer three tanks in this many no. He's gonna but need a perfect fight near an overcharge. He does have yeah. a sexy battery on the edge of his ramp. And yeah, okay. Oh, okay, it's very important that baby. Oh, I love the turrets. I was hoping he would do this. Too many Terran players kind of forget about it. But turrets are so godlike against phoenixes, which is make it impossible for these phoenixes to fly forward. I really love the strategy choice here of baby marine. Jumi knows that if he lets all of this finish up, it's going to get even harder. But if he runs forward into three tanks, he's also going to get obliterated. Like, what do you do yeah. if you're Jumi here? Oh, definitely cancel the third base, no? Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So I think cancel the third base and probably send the Phoenix to the other side because Baby Marine can't really push into a super battery anyways and the Phoenixes are kind of useless here because you can't go for a straight up fight anyways. So mm -hmm. maybe like make a prism and send the Phoenixes to the other side, try to find some damage or yeah, go for a what? <laughs> go for a what? <laughs> go for a Dude. sort of hidden base, but not really. Yeah. Hey, mate, that actually means that he could recall the army basically into the natural of Baby Marine. Oh. If, if yeah, 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 that's true. I didn't think about that. It's <laughs> a lot of energy on these Phoenixes, but there are a decent amount of Marines at home to deflect them. I really like the way that Baby Marine has played this game, but he's not there yet, and Jumi has definitely made the correct choice in cancelling the third base, because if he tried to save that, yeah, he would have already lost the game. Yeah, 100%. That, that was the third base you have to cancel. To the left? I, I don't know. Can you scream yeah. to the left one time in Italian or would that be too No, good? no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. <laughs> I wish I could do that. How far away from you is he? Nah, quite a bit. Uh, he probably has his music on as well, as well. So even if I scream really loud, I don't think he's going to hear He's going to work on uh, the rock tower here. You can knock down the rocks, but... Baby Marine just kind of needs to scout, and at this point he is scouting, but obviously Phoenixes are very good in denying scouts. This Marine does Nine see the pylon. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's. Oh, let's hope he doesn't stop at the pylon. Imagine oh. how. No! He changed no, direction. Bro. He changed direction. Oh, but he, okay, let's he go has back. to know, right? Like, yes. it's so obvious. He is about to see it. He throws down a scan in the natural. Baby Marine indeed has to know, and he does know, and he's about to find it. The Nexus is done. Rico has been used on the army. No probes in the mix, I believe. Or did he put some probes in the mix? Oh, my goodness. Now the entire army is here. This is crazy. What is yeah, happening? Yeah. Oh, my God. I cannot believe it. He's going for a Noli. He just used that base for a recall. Oh! oh <laughs> okay. Well, oh, two out of three nice. Colossus are gone. Obviously, the rest of the army is still a bit intimidating, but nowhere near as intimidating as an army with three Colossus. We've got Marauders in the mix. SCVs coming. Perfect. Force wheels going down by Jumi. But there are Widowmines. There are SCVs. There are Marauders. 
And sure, Baby Marine is going to take a bit of a beating here, but he should be able to easily clean up the entire army. I gotta say, yes. I lost. don't know about that. He lost a lot of stuff, man. Uh, thanks. Oh my goodness. Where are the other oh units? God, we should have some reinforcements. Please, F2! Oh. He has a lot of stuff in the main. No, mate. Look at the supply. What happened this game? Well. Obviously, just gateway. These are basic gateway units. No charge, no blink. So even just seven or eight marauders and a couple of marines. Oh, yeah. But there is one more colossus showing up. And that one colossus is going to ruin the party. Jumi with a 200 IQ big brain recall to the other side of the map. Even though he kind of messed up. He lost two out of three colossus very quickly. Is getting away with murder here. Unless baby marine can somehow find a way to kill the final colossus. But how? He's got vikings on the way. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Right? Yeah, to be honest, if he doesn't die now, I, like he's still in a good position. His room is on two bases. That third base is like, li literally just chilling right there. Yeah, that's just a wait for the Vikings. Yes, please wait for the Vikings. Okay. What are we doing? A Push scan, stage. by the way, to kill the observer would be yeah, big. Yeah. Can Baby Marine keep the Widow Mines alive? Can he buy enough time for the Vikings? Yumi is warping in a couple of extra stalkers. He's got a disruptor in the mix now as well. Baby Marine is about to get the heads up that there is a disruptor. He sees it. Nice force fields again. Force fields. Oh, nice shot on the Widow Mines too. Dude, why is he scanning? Doesn't he know that he had to recall his whole army? To what? Okay, no, he that's a. Uh, He's scanning his third base. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's a crazy scan. He's now going to uh, pick up one Marine to see how many probes there are at that uh, hidden base. And there are actually 13 probes. Four Vikings, I think, is all the Bay Marine needs. He's got two Vikings right now. Viking number three and four on the way. But he's so impatient. He just wants to fight against a million force fields. Yeah, we don't want to fight this yet. I don't know. I think he's in no rush. Like, Jumi has no tech. He's going to have two Disruptors and no Colossus. Yeah, you make know. it sound easy. Yeah, you're right. He doesn't know. This is that. obviously a very hectic game right now. It's very stressful. In yeah. a game where he felt he was in total control, Baby Marine will see it as a game where he just lost 35 SCVs and there are disruptors showing up. He probably thinks he's in all sorts of trouble. Okay, he's going to sim forward. He's going to pull the cuckoo, but he cannot pull the cuckoo because of perfect force fields. And now there is an overcharge on the other side of the map. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. He could still win indeed, but he needs to chill and he's not chilling at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I feel like we don't need to... Yeah, he doesn't know about this, obviously, though. Like, he, do he doesn't see what we see. He's, ahead. He's one upgrade ahead against normal gateway units, yep. basically, pretty much, except the three disruptors. Now he has a lot of Vikings on the field oh, as well. Oh, Jumi? If Jumi walks into the natural, it can get dicey. Oh, oh. We can snipe that. Uh, nice Nova. Oh, no, yeah, goes down to another three. nice Nova. Two out of three Novas connected in a big way. The rest of the Protoss army is still a bit underwhelming. Is Coco's Overcharge available? Coco's Overcharge Whoa. is not available. The Terran army, one more Disruptor shows up. Disruptor gets picked off. This is an awkward fight for Jumi. No blink, no charge. You Coming out. Yes, he, he got most of them. Can we heal up? Can we heal up? 19 SCVs, but the Dream is still alive. Like, if he cleans up this army and he gets the base, he goes for the pylon. Yes! That's the pylon! Baby Marine with a 19 SCV victory as there is still that gateway, but the disruptors go down. The final few stalkers that nice. don't have Link go down <laughs> as well. And Baby uh, Marine wins a very wild game two <laughs> between... That is just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> we are video gaming on the Friday night, Rainer. <laughs> oh yeah, man. They're gaming. Absolute gamers. Unbelievable. How often uh, do you manage to catch the Basilisk Big Brain Bots? Uh, quite a bit, quite a bit, I would say. Yeah, you like having it open? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like having it in the background. I don't <laughs> think I caught the last, last, last one. I La don't remember. What last week, uh, the main event was Skillis versus Lambo. It was actually a great series. I don't know if you saw. Oh yeah, it. I couldn't watch that. I was probably in IKEA actually. I don't remember. Yeah, you were at IKEA at 10 p.m., mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, when was it? 17? Yeah, exactly a week nah, ago. I actually don't, I don't remember what I was doing. <laughs> it's probably, it was likely that I was Ikea, in Ikea that day and setting up everything, but I don't remember. Yeah, I, I could see you building furniture at 10 p.m., but actually being in the Ikea at 10 p.m. Well, Ikea impressive. closed at uh, 9.30, I think. Yeah. 
so I ran that. I was probably driving back home. So or not then. Why are you making excuses about missing the big brain bouts? I'm getting a little. I'm not making here. excuses. I'm actually like being serious that I'm thinking. I was either at a key I was building something, but I don't remember. I don't know how well you read your contract, mate, but if I ask you a question about the big brain bouts and you don't have the answer for it, I get 5% of your salary. <laughs> I don't think that's in the contract. And I've got questions, mate. I've got I've got a notebook ready. I wrote down so I'll, many questions. I'll call my lawyer. He's one of the best. <laughs> well, your lawyer is my lawyer. <laughs> and he's siding he with me. <laughs> I'm sure he's not. Come on. All right. What is this? Yes, over here. Well, mate, this is uh, quite the best of five that you have joined me for so far. For Jumi and Baby Marine, two absolute favorites of the European scene when it comes to the level of StarCraft that I really enjoy watching. And they are video gaming so far. They're at it. Second best of five of the big brain bouts. That means 80 bucks. No, wait. What is the second best of five? It is 100 bucks in total. 80 for the winner, 20 for the loser. Let's go ahead and see what game three has in store for us bottom right side we're looking at the main base of the man who made life a little harder than himself but he in the end got the job done snipe some disruptors got on top of a couple of basic gateway units and that is all he needed to do team roddy's baby marine that was a wild game by the way i don't know i can't <laughs> no, I'm speechless and in the top left we have the german player for jumi yeah, what do you think about that game? I uh, I really wonder how that game would have gone if Jumi did not lose two out of three Colossus when the fight started. Because if you oh, yeah. if you saw the impact that that one Colossus had for as long as it had, and then I think there was one more Colossus that was rallied to the other side of the map, uh, could have been a very different game. The recall was 200 IQ, I gotta say. Yeah, the recall was actually very nice. I don't think Jumi could have ever fought the main army. But uh, I don't know, you can say the same for uh, my brother. He messed up the fight a lot. Um, yeah, but I yeah, think this is I, one of these fights that he was just not mentally prepared for at all. Like oh he's yeah, just going absolutely. home, right? He was just chilling, he walks home and suddenly there is a fight. So I think it completely blindsided him and that's why he took a very awkward fight at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I, like he was sure Juby was gonna all in on two bases. So you could see him when he picked up everything, he was making bunkers and turrets, yeah. just getting ready for the fight. And then his army was, Jumi's army was there faster than his actual army. So he was definitely not prepared for that one. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was sick game. It's chaotic and I then like it's obviously very hard to stay calm and composed and make all the uh, correct assessments the way that you would normally make them. But hey, he could have easily messed up in an even bigger way, but he didn't. So kudos to Baby Marine and we've got a series on our hands. I'm sure that they enjoyed that one over at Epic Land too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The fellas in the UK enjoy this kind of yeah. games, I'm sure. <laughs> they're probably all 17 pints in and they're like, man, that oh, was yeah. a game. Yeah. <laughs> they're hugging Jumi, they're like, sick game. Jumi's like, I lost, guys. Come on. <laughs> like, you know, It's hard to keep these UK boys in check. Ooh, that Reaper oh, is most Reaper likely going to die, though. All that, what? yeah. What? What? Did he scout the deck at least? Or? I don't think he's scout. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, hmm. my God. That, that's pain. Yep, that is pain. A little bit. Oh. For me, whenever I play Terran, you know I got to 6 4 with Terran, by the way? I did not know. Yeah, I, before leaving, I, I got to 6 4. I, I want to get to. Well, the dream would be 7k, but I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> we'll see about that. But I so have the I feeling see. that Gabe is going to personally try to prevent you from getting 7k with oh, Terran. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gabe is the ultimate challenge for me at 7k. Ooh, that marine might die. The marine does die. I was a little bit too far away from the bunker. Once more, kind of a hectic and chaotic start here for Baby Marine, who's playing triple CC. Build otherwise, even though he didn't get the scout off, mate, this actually works out. It's a cyclone against a oracle, and it's very quick triple CC. And obviously, Jumi doesn't know that yet, but yeah, these adepts are very annoying. The adepts are a problem. The oracle shouldn't be too much of a problem. No, the Oracle should be fine to deal with. Uh, the build, as I said, is very good against Target. The Felix probably might be um, played against Target. I don't see this. Doing Look at the timing. Spider. Look at the timing of yeah. the Cyclone. Ho, ho, ho. That was very nice. Um, now he confirms it's uh, Target as well, so he can get all the uh, things he wants to get ready for. Um, the only thing is, the early, moves, the early game was quite bad, honestly. Yes, but I think the build orders make up for it, no? You know, you know, 
the, yeah, the build, the builder is Ooh. probably cap free, and also this map. The only thing is this map is very good for toss apparently. That's what I've been told. Yeah, probably by Gabe, I guess. Map. Or what? No, no, no. Gabe, Gabe is not biased anymore. Ever since Aloe Vera won. Yeah. Yeah, he's a man of the facts. You know, he just speaks facts. Gabe has always been a man of facts. Unless he has lost two letter games, then I don't trust him. <laughs> like, if Gabe hasn't played a game yet, I always trust him. But if Gabe has two games under his belt, that's when I know we have to take his comments with the grain of salt. Oh, yeah. Even if he wins, though. No, but the, the, reason, the reason why I don't mind it so much for uh, Baby Marine is that even though Jumi got the scout off, but when he did, at that point you can't really do a whole lot else as a Protoss. So now his third, uh, the third base is still pretty damn late compared to this orbital. The worker advantage is only six. It's not like we already have two Colossus out or something. Like I think this is a perfectly fine start for Baby Marine. Are you still here, Rainer? I think we lost Rainer, guys, for a split second. Uh, I'm sure that he will call me back. Hello? Hello, hello. Yes, there you are. Do you hear me, Rainer? Uh, we heard him. He does not hear me. He's trying again. Yeah, I figured out the issue. All right. Welcome it's back, mate. Webcam is uh, destroying everything. I don't know. Yeah, you can turn it off. You don't need the webcam. Uh, it was mostly in the beginning for everybody to just to see your face. But if you want to turn it off from here on out, mate, you can have it off. I it was it was on, but it was like kind of frozen, so I restarted it. Like I uh, deactivated, and activated it again, and everything is frozen. I'll just keep it off. I'm very surprised to see for Jumi building a proxy gateway while playing Phoenix Colossus. What do you think is the idea behind that? So I think the idea is probably that Jumi wants to do something similar to the last game. Oh, hey, hey, this is dangerous, no? From both sides. Oh, Colossus Micro is very sexy. Couple of stalkers do get obliterated. Is there a shield battery for this Colossus to run to as the Immortal gets picked off? The guy with the gun is pretty good. Still no battery there, by the way. The third base of Jumi right now in a little bit of a pickle. Colossus does not have extended thermal lens. Phoenix is going to need to save the day here. Uh, I actually... That, that, that trade was very good, even if he didn't end up getting the Colossus. I felt like it was very good, and like my brother should have a clue now here what's going on. Like, you don't see Colossus Phoenix having no warriors in the third base at 7 minutes, no? Like, that's not a common thing. So, I feel like he should kind of know, but does he really, you know? Don't think he has totally put it together yet, but uh, this is honestly not looking very good anymore for Jumi. Yumi has not built workers in forever, so it really all comes down to this kind of random Phoenix Colossus gateway attack. And I think that one Immortal was actually very important, right? Because that one Immortal normally keeps the Marauders at bay. Now there is not really anything to keep these Marauders at bay. And we all know how crappy Colossus can be against Marauders. Our underdog is looking pretty good here, 8 minutes into game 3. Yeah, yeah I think this is a good game out of me. Just, uh, oh, he's making a bunker as well, I actually don't mind that. He has to be a little bit careful. I will mind the scan on third base now. But uh, Jimmy's killing the rocks. What? Okay, this, this. Never mind. I don't understand this map, by the way. <laughs> We have a couple of Widow Mines in the mix. Good lives there, though. There's a lot of energy on the Phoenixes. That's, like, really the only thing that is looking great here for Jumi. 69 army supply. Baby Marine has been, a has been going a bit crazy on SCV production. Like, this is it for Jumi. Jumi kind of needs to win the game right here, right now. Repair your bunker. Load up the bunker. Baby Marine does not have too many units. This is actually turning into a very bad scenario for Baby Marine real quick. Jumi has not built a probe in minutes straight, and it seems like he's getting away with it. Wow. That's why I said this kind of push is always dangerous, because you're underestimating it, obviously you don't know it's coming. Even though I feel, felt, felt like he kind of should know at that point. You walk into a Protoss third base and there's no probes at 6 minutes and 30 minutes yep. after Phoenix closes, I don't know. I know it's something you don't see every day, but yeah, I feel like he should have maybe put one and one together, you know. I think uh, what is also a little bit of a tell... Yeah, I think I have to change your microphone again. I feel like you're more quiet now than you were before. I'm going to put you at 140. Can you talk? Hello, hello? Yeah, no, it's better. Uh, is it now? For some reason, your volume just keeps on changing. Also, guys, we have lost the webcam because it was bugging out. So no more Rainer for you guys. You're just going to have to listen to him. You know what was also a bit of a tell? 
that the Phoenixes were not looking for reinforcement uh, pickoffs. They were not looking for SCV damage. They were kind yeah. of just gathering up a crazy amount of energy. I think that's a bit of a tell too. Yeah, it's a bit of a tell. Like the Phoenixes were never moving out. He was just kind of saving them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a shame because it was a game where a lot of things went well for Baby Marine despite the fact that he had a bit of a rocky start. The adapts obviously finding slightly more damage than it was supposed to but that didn't matter because he had the triple cc opening he had perfect defense against the first oracle uh, then he even gets a random pretty good fight in the center of the map where he gets the immortal that's a very important unit to pick off uh, not a game that he's supposed to lose in that manner wait how is it possible we're playing neo into ancient aren't those both pretty good those maps uh, a lot of the Terrans love Ancient. Like Clem, for instance, always plays this map in best of three against Protoss. Really? Yep. Okay, okay. Ah! I didn't know that. I thought it was just a bad map for uh, Terrans. No, I, when the map pool at first was introduced, I was with you. I thought that this would be one of the better Protoss maps out there. But then I saw Clem playing it in best of three after best of three, and I asked him about it, and Clem was just like, hmm, yeah kind of like it against Protoss. I was like, why? Clem was like, I don't know. I was like, okay. Ah, nice. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I tried to gather <laughs> some information so I could let the people know why Clem would like it, but <laughs> Clem wasn't See, totally Clem sure. Clem just likes it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, it's the color green or something. I don't know. Yeah, classic Terra player, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. I think it's because the bases are kind of far apart if you think about it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of um, surface like area to drop in the main base as well. Yeah, exactly. That's base. Yeah, I've... Probably that's why they like it. <laughs> Clem doesn't even know why he likes the map. So, Reina, you mentioned earlier that you're currently in Italy. When are you coming back to the Netherlands? Oh, it's so very soon. I have to go back. I'm going to get on the grind of streaming. Um, one, one of March is when my flight is. The 1st of March. 1st of March. Sorry about that. You're going to be on the streaming grind. I'm going to be on the streaming grind. And with the streaming grind, you mean like do one stream for five hours and not stream for two weeks or an actual streaming grind? An actual streaming grind. You know, I got the, the best internet I could. Um, I got the one, one gigabyte download and one gigabyte upload. I was very hyped about that. Okay. Did you see Jonas stream the other day? Oh, yeah, I saw him. He still has it, mate. The man goes live. <laughs> 3K viewers. Yeah, I cannot believe my eyes. <laughs> He's streaming every day. I don't know, like... I'm kind of jealous. Unbelievable. <laughs> You've been he streaming for quite yes. a bit, and you can obviously get up to pretty decent viewership as well, but it's really insane how it works for Yona. Yona just turns yeah, alive no, like, like, hello, he guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he has the little uh, live starting soon screen, and then five minutes later, he goes, hi, and like 3K people. <laughs> if gifted subs in two seconds, and I got right. Must be nice being a rock star over here. <laughs> and he's your teammate now, mate. Can you believe it? He's my teammate, yeah. I'm a teammate of a rock star. Alrighty. I really hope that we can enjoy a game five together. But for that to happen, this man needs to get a W here on Ancient. In the top right side, we're looking at the main base of a man who's playing a wild best of five so far. I almost feel that everything they prepared, you can throw it out of the window. Because this series is just getting messy dirty and they are both taking each other to places nobody really wants to be fun for us probably a bit uncomfortable for them can we get a game five out of this man team ruddy's baby marine the younger brother of the man on the call with me absolutely and in the bottom left we have the player that's doing kind of uh, weird 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 stuff in this series we have the german player jumi you know what i would like to see now kevin Tell i would me. like to see my brother take the game approach Okay. Where you just play kind of standard, you kill like three probes, you like play very standard, you know, you just have more units than your opponent. I don't know. That's the game approach, I feel like. Kill three probes, the game is over. I guess you gotta have a bit of the game magic, but I don't know. I think that takes around 700 hours of streaming and punishing greedy Protoss players for a living. I think that's when you become good. Yeah, but you can try, you know, like, Gabe plays very simple, you just does his things very good you know that's what i would like to see now from my brother nothing too crazy because you can see that Jum is the one bringing craziness in the series so you just gotta i don't know i feel like if he plays solid and he's smart about the game i think he's uh good chances now 
Are you ready for our first Padel session when you're back in the Netherlands? Oh yeah. Because oh, it's yeah. happening, mate. I cannot wait. You're not gonna, I'm gonna destroy you, right? No, you're not. You're tiny. I'm uh, just gonna. Absolutely. I'm gonna hit every ball deep onto the field, and you're gonna uh, try to catch it, but you won't be able to catch it because you're too small. It's gonna be great. You're gonna see the speed difference. They they called me Padel King in uh, elementary school. I am going to put you in the corner, mate. I'm gonna make you sure that you run, chase balls that you think you can get, but you won't be quite able to get, and then you trip and you fall down with your nose into the corner. And I'll take a picture uh, and put it in the Discord. It's all good. I'm an expert at chasing balls. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a little skirmish here between a Reaper and an Adept in the center of the map. Somebody in our chat just asked, when is the Muslim playing? The Muslim is part of the main event, which means that he will play approximately around 9 p.m. So in two hours, give or take. Uh, well, a bit less, maybe one hour and 30 minutes. But we never really know how long the series go. It could be two hours, it can also be one hour. But the Muslim versus Pig is normally supposed to start around 9 p.m. What do you make of that dance between the Reaper and the Adept? I don't know, such a tryhard. I'm gonna tell him. This is like the useless stuff he does, which never brings to anything good. I don't know. I I'll uh, have a talk with him after this series. This feels that. like a real spirit build, by the way. Two Hellions into Widow Mines. Yeah, yeah. Hey, spirit has been having a lot of success yep. lately. The guy's on fire. Oh my god, Yumi is gonna do his weird charge again. You know what's funny is when this patch was just announced and we were playing a couple of games on the new patch, Yumi was actually experimenting with this quite a bit. In the first few games that I saw of him in the weekly, and it was obviously way before the patch actually was out, he was doing this quite often. And I never really understood why he liked it or why he thinks it's great. Oh, uh, you don't know? You still don't know? Or well, I mean, I, I, obviously in an ideal world, the Terran has absolutely nothing at home and four Zealots completely mess the Terran up, but the build that Yumi goes for is absolutely horrific in dealing with Widow Mind drops too. So your Zealots basically need to kill 25 SCVs because it's inevitable that you're going to take a lot of damage at home. Yeah, I don't know. To be honest, it, it looks like uh, this is probably the best thing he can go up against, I would say, maybe. He's gonna have four zealots and Terran has a tank. I, I don't know, man. I don't see this build working out too often. No, no I never uh, really I see it working out. I feel like as a Terran, you really have to mess up defensively against this. Bay Marine can now just go ahead and fly in. He does see the stalks being warped in. Okay, if he does not commit, that's obviously great news for Jumi. That is kind of best case scenario. Bay Marine is gonna make a Viking at home. He was building something there, a bunker, I believe it a was. Bunker, yeah. yeah. Man, this is kind of scary, no? We only have two, ma two marines. If... Oh my god, he can die here. Yeah, eight zealots. Well, if we repair and we use choke I, points, I well. Uh, okay, no, that's oh. indeed gonna get ugly. He should have just gone for it with the Widow Mine drop. Because there really was so little at home. We're gonna pull a couple of the marines out of the bunker. A few zealots get surrounded. That's a lot of zealots already going down. Viking really needs to kill the war prison. Widow mind drop on the other side of the map, not getting a lot yet. The one in the main base, not burrowing. Oh my god, he's still not burrowing. He's too busy microing against Zell as well. We found the one scenario where this build is really good. Yeah. That's so unlucky as well. Oh. 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 What, 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 what? We don't mind, bro. <laughs> ay, 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 that is it. GG. Four Jumi gets the job done. Honestly, it's the first time that I really see this build shine and work. Eight Zealots against a tank, no bunker. And obviously the Widow Mines, they waited. If the Widow Mines would have just gone for it the very first time when there were two Stalkers, it would have been uh, fantastic, I think, for Babe Marine. Because the two Stalkers can never kill the Widow Mines and the Medivac at the same time. They can't really kill anything, honestly. They can only damage stuff before it goes down. And then he buys more time for his own defense on his side of the map. But I think he got scared when he saw the two Stalkers. He's like, ah, just in case there are more Stalkers or there is Blink. Bay Marine didn't go for it, and I think that's what costed him the game. Yeah, you know what? I think that build looked exactly like uh, what a Forigate blink would look like, I guess, with the War Prism timing and the Stalkers at home, because he can't really know it's charged. So he was probably that's why he was making the bunker. Mm -hmm. And then when he saw the third base, he cancelled the bunker because he was sure it was Forigate blink. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Jumi, Jumi approached the series with some uh, wild stuff. Um, yeah, and it managed to work out.
threw my brother off quite a bit. And the crowd goes wild at Epic Land. Yeah, absolutely. Those those lads, 20 beers in. They're now they're going to corrupt our poor Ford Jume and he probably won't be the Epic Land champion. Yeah, I don't know. I can, I can see them. I, I can see them corrupting the li little kid. I hope the K10 managers can protect their boy to make sure that he doesn't get too out of line. <laughs> I think Jume will be fine. All right, well, that was our second series of the night. A fun one, obviously. Thanks so much, Basilisk, for gifting us 10 subbies. A little bit like Yona, after all, Rainer. A little bit like Yona? What do you mean? Well, I'm getting some subs over here on the Friday night. Absolutely, man. But uh, <laughs> we're not quite like him, Kev. <laughs> the guy says two words. Crowd goes wild, 50 gifted subs. But the good thing is he's on our side, mate. So Yeah, he's on our side. We have the edge now. <laughs> All right, Rainer, do you want to stick around a bit longer or do you have to go? Uh, I'm going to go for dinner now. I think I think it's uh, ready. All right. If you would uh, like to come back later about. after dinner and you have a bit of spare time and you're like, you know what? I would love to see a little bit of Piggy versus Ben. You're always welcome back. Uh, I hope you know. Yeah, yeah I, I can do a couple of games later on. All right, that sounds perfectly fine, and I'll let you go. Any final words, mate, before we hang up? Um, well, obviously, shout out to my new team, Basilisk. It feels really nice saying it. Uh, I don't know, I'm just super excited for what we're going to do together. Being teammates with you, Yona, Trigger, it's just it's an amazing feeling. So, yeah, uh, just looking forward to it. And uh, thank you guys so much for everything. See you soon. Tried so Thank hard to get rid of you, you know. I was already with you on Clash. First, I'm on Clash, then you join. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. So I joined yeah, Basilisk. Yeah, that was funny. As soon as I joined, you pissed off. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's I'm not true. leaving Basilisk, mate. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah, you better not, Kev. I'll take it personal this time. <laughs> As you should. All right, mate. Enjoy <laughs> dinner. Give the little bro a hug. Obviously, it was still a fun series. I'm sure he's not happy with the result, but I enjoyed the game. So hopefully dinner is nice and maybe I'll see you for a couple games of the main event. I think Ben and Pig would also really love that if you would join for a little bit. Yeah, I think I can. I'll let you know anyways. Thank you so much, Kevin. All right. Maybe see you later. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Bye-bye. Bye, matey. All right, guys, that was Rainer. For everybody that missed the news, Rainer has officially joined Basilisk today as well, which obviously makes Basilisk, as somebody in the chat mentioned earlier, a bit overpowered at this point. Saro is really good. Trigger is really good. I'm really good. Rainer is decent. One hell of a team, guys. One hell of a team. Cannot wait for future uh, team competitions. Uh, the games tonight unfortunately not the longest games i feel like we've had fun games but all the games have ended rather uh, quickly uh, regardless grats to for jumi i heard there was a picture by the way in the discord of uh, the boys at epic land watching jumi i would like to see that quickly if i can oh that's really cool so this was a picture of uh mars Bar. thank you mars Bar, for showing this was jumi playing the games and then a lot of the boys standing around him that's pretty awesome <laughs> i'm sure that they are having a good time over in the uk it's always nice to see some grassroots events and even though what i do here uh, with basilisk is online it does feel a little grassroots too and i hope you guys are at home around computers or tvs watching these games and enjoying it uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple minutes for myself. And after that, I'll be back with a TVZ, the co-main event of the evening. Uh, I think it's going to be a banger and it should give us some long games. We've got Young Yakov, a Zerg player going up against Battle Booty. Our German Terran who made it to the grand finals of the European Pro Tour Weekly two weeks ago. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. See you guys in a couple minutes.